Star, uh, episode 413, being directed by our very own Tim Decay. Tim is a director, I have to say. Um, he's one of my favorites. He's such a great guy and such a collaborative artist that you want to do your best work for him. Tim speaks and people listen. Run and write again. Keep rolling. Hey, everybody. Tim Decay here. Uh, we are at the Cotton Club for episode 413. It's a great episode, and I'm directing, so it's fun. Cable is now sort of the new independent film world, and I think because of that, you've got a lot of actors now who want to get behind the camera. Yeah. Tim, he'd come to me, even in the first season, and said, I'd love to direct one of these. I was interested in directing quite a few years ago, and I thought I would love to direct an episode of White Collar. I'm going to need you two to step out of the vehicle. Seriously? Yep. The first episode Tim ever directed was in the third season. It was our Yankee Stadium episode. And you can only really appreciate the magnitude of the job he did when you realize that this was just this giant scheduling location nightmare. Anything's possible. Tim did such a fantastic job on the Yankee Stadium episode that giving him an episode in season four was really a no-brainer. Whoever is behind this is covering their tracks. <laughs> Directing and being the lead actor, it's a juggling act. The real challenges are our schedule. It's like, how can you star in the same show you're directing? It's actually the episode before. When you're prepping an episode to direct and you're in that episode, you're working 24 hours a day. I'm just getting into character. Please don't. He has to be acting and then running off to prep, running off to see locations. It's amazing to me how he can put on the two hats, the director hat, the actor hat, switch back and forth. I don't know how he does it. It's superhuman. The city never sleeps. It's great to have an internal director. They know the show intimately. They know the crew intimately. They know the look of the show, which is exciting. Tim relates to us in the same way he always does. I have a very trusting relationship with him. I think we all do. He takes the role really seriously, but at the same time, he makes it fun. Oh, that's great. He's fair to everyone. I always call him the mayor of the set. Go! The crew's been very nice, but that's only because he's very sensitive. And once he starts crying, our whole day is shot. Every time he opens his mouth, I reach for my cuffs. Our Harlem Jazz episode definitely poses a lot of challenges. We've got a lot of locations, got moving shots, night shots, a huge concert in the Cotton Club. He had a 100-person crew, tons of extras, an amazing amount of technical things that had to go right at the same time. It, this is a real daunting task for anyone. The clock is always ticking. We have to get the day within a certain amount of hours and get all the scenes done. It's so effortless for him. He's amazing. There's the old saying that you throw somebody a little bit of heat that by the next time they come around, if you can take it, they give you the whole entire fire, you know, and they definitely did on this episode. A lot of this takes place in the real Cotton Club. And what a lot of people don't realize, it's a very small, intimate space, which, you know, is great when you're listening to jazz, but not so great when uh, you're shooting a network television show. There was a lot of choreography, a lot of different um, pieces he had to put together. Seeing him transform into this director was, was really amazing. Yeah. Ah. Suddenly, he's laying down the lock, and he's the captain. It's a tiny space, which comes with all these inherent challenges, and we have singing. Think you can handle it? You know I can handle it. I went in really wanting this kind of homage to Diane Carroll, and having her singing in the Cotton Club started the entire thing. I'll show you how to class it up. Listen, little man, if you think you can show me some class, you have another thought coming. And the idea was it was going to be lip synced. And Diane got up there, she was sort of warming herself up, and she started to sing. And in that moment, Tim looked over in the band, and he, he motioned for them, and they started to play. And suddenly, you've got Diane Carroll on stage singing live. It really made the episode. When Diane Carroll broke into Harlem on my mind, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Will not ring true with Harlem on my mind. There she is singing in the place where she grew up, and uh, it was magical. Diane Carroll is really an entertainment legend, best known for her singing career, where she came out of the Rat Pack era. get to see Diane Carroll sing in this space. I mean, it's just one of those moments you don't forget. I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. I really enjoyed having Tim as the director. He did a fantastic job. There are a lot of people helping out, going an extra mile, and that means a lot. He's what you hope for in a television director. It's joy to direct on White Collar.